No people live on Centre Island right now. Um, all the homes are on Ward's Island and Algonquin Island, which are the eastern side of the islands. Um, Centre Island is more a visitor place or a place to go in the summer and enjoy yourself, or any time of the season, uh, any time of the year. All seasons are perfect over there. Uh, there's no no people living uh, on the west or center part of the islands. The residents all live on the east side of the island, wards or Algonquin. And we have about 800 residents that live here year round. Like I was talking about, most of the people are living here and here. And this, here we are over here, that's the fire hall. The airport is this a long way for us to go to get there. It's yeah. one of the longest calls in the, in the city of Toronto for a fire department. But this we have a very dangerous uh, um, amount of chemicals stored here at the filtration plant. We have the island school here where the kids, uh, grade five, two grade five classes stay overnight. So we always have about 60 or 70 kids staying overnight here too at the school. Um, so there's a potential for a lot to happen. We're pretty good on prevention, I guess, and people are very safety conscious over here too because they realize uh, the unique challenges of helping them out. So they're usually pretty safety conscious as well. We can get to most places at most times of the year. Muggs Island is a place we can only get to in the winter. In the summertime uh, or in the warmer weather, it's a fire, fire boat call. They will come here. In the winter time, they put a footbridge in here when this is all frozen, and so we can actually walk on there. Uh, the fireboat is also um, an icebreaker, so they can break through the ice if the harbor's frozen and, and get to this island. But otherwise, uh, most other places that we can get to, there are a few islands, like Forestry Island, um, that have nothing, there's just forest on there. Yeah. yeah, but it was a happening place here at one time. Yeah, there were like 10,000 residents over here. Wow. 10,000. So 10,000 and now we're down to 800? 8,900. Yeah, 8,900. Still. 261 homes? Yeah. Yeah. And how many homes were there originally? Would you have any idea? A lot. Yeah, because... Well, the population would be more than 10 times than what it is today. All the homes went all the way down here and then on the, on the east side, and here were homes, and then all the way along, and then out to the airport. Well, and there was a baseball stadium amusement park. Um, they even had a horse that used to dive off a diving board. Yeah, they had oh, a yeah, diving I see a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Manitou Road was like the main, main happening place uh, with businesses, hotels, everything. And same with Hamlin. Hamlin had a, a lot of happening things in its heyday. Well, that's where Babe Ruth hit his home run into yeah, Toronto Bay. Yeah. 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 And I, actually, at one time, uh, I don't know the exact date, I think it was in the late 1800s, the island was actually attached yeah, to here. And they had a, like a hurricane type storm. It was a peninsula, and then a storm broke it open to make it flat. Yeah. So it was actually a weather event that <coughs> made this into an island, broke that off. And uh, I, be I believe there was even a hotel. There was a hotel, um, Manitou Hotel and Hamlet's Hotel. Yep. And uh, in this storm, I think one of the hotels was damaged beyond repair? Uh, maybe the Ward's Hotel. Probably because it was Anyways, it's a great place to be for, if you like weather, you know, on a stormy night. Or, yeah, the water things. The waves are smashing into the brake wall, and this this station actually vibrates. You know, my computer screen vibrates when big waves hit. And, uh, and actually, some of the homes over storms, beautiful. Area. Yeah, some of the homes over on Algonquin really nice floated by, over from Hamlin over to here to make room for the airport. And uh, the old fire hall. You should check it out sometime. Don't come in the blizzard. But it is beautiful. Is that a picture of the thing that's going on? Of the road wave? Road wave, yeah. Yeah, a picture of the wave coming off. Yeah, so the old fire hall used to be down on the main 
the old main yeah. street of the island, and uh, so they floated it down here. They floated the fire hall over. They floated it on a barge, yeah. They put it together with duct tape, and that, guess, that's yeah. true. I had the, this station here was built in 1995. Previous to that, we had the, the station just down the road with the alcohol. In that bridge. creamy yellow building? You know the creamy yellow? It's now a creamy club. Uh, yeah. Which way did you guys walk? Do you walk yeah, on the road? Uh, this way here. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you would have seen that uh, creamy yellow. Red, red door? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was the old fire hall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in those days, um, it, it only had one truck and three, three personnel. Oh. Yeah. But as a matter of fact, if you go way back in the fire history here, they even had a motorcycle that they used. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a fire I mean, motorcycle. I think a fire you motorcycle. That, eh? yeah. how, how did that work? They had just, just a guy on it. Pumps and, and stuff. And pumps and everything on a cycle, too. Yeah. Cycle. Yes, there was an attachment on the side, like a, a carrier, but it wasn't for a carrier, it was for equipment. Yeah. So, like I say, it's a unique place to work, and, um, you know, I really enjoyed my time in Regent Park. I loved it. I had. I did a lot of growing up there. I, I got there when I was 24 years old and uh, stayed there until I was 39. And uh, it was a great, great place with a lot of veteran, experienced firefighters that uh, I learned a lot from. And I had, had so much fun there. I was almost, um, you know, it was almost like when I got promoted. Uh, it wasn't like a really happy moment for me because I knew um, I would have to leave that station, you know, at that time. But anyways, this has been great over here, and uh, I imagine this is where I'll retire from as well. Yeah. yeah. Those people are wondering when it's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe not at all. Uh, one day you got to leave. We're only allowed to uh, remain on the trucks till we're 65. Oh, really? After 65, you can still stay in the fire department, but not on the, not on the truck. There's no, man no, no mandatory age for retiring, except you can't stay on a truck after 65. You guys have like a hockey team too and stuff here? Like the Yo, many the hockey teams, yeah. Players. There's many leagues. Uh, different levels, there's a house league, there's a old timers league, there's a geriatric league, uh, and then there's all different divisions, A, B, C, D, and the pretty high caliber, the A hockey team, pretty high caliber, actually with some ex-NHLers uh, that have played on our teams, yeah. Yeah, so really great hockey. We also do, over here, uh, we do a disc day once uh, once a year. It's a disc golf. Frisbee we have golf. A yeah, yeah. Frisbee golf course here, or disc golf as they call it. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the top five courses in North America here on the island. Wow. They call it the Old Lady. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to disc golf. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever done that, but so years ago uh, we used to have a pickup hockey. We play from September to May, and then in May, somebody came up with a great idea. Hey, why don't we go over to the island and Pete can barbecue for us and we can have a disc day. Well, that started out with a few hockey guys, and now it's evolved to where we have up to 70 or 80 players that come and play, and we raise money for uh, cystic fibrosis. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's a fun day, and we get to help out a little you know, depending uh, on what you're here for, if you're here just for the day to enjoy the beach and a picnic and uh, sit under a tree, um, that's a perfect way of spending a day. For those uh, who like a little bit of the history, um, there's a lot of history that can be dug up. We still have a, a church here, St. Andrews by the Lake, it was built in 1884, has beautiful stained glass windows. Um, so there's a lot of history here if people want to dig into it. If not, it's just a perfect place to come and enjoy a day or a weekend. Uh, there's some bed and breakfasts around our community. There's a lot of people that would stay on their boats for a weekend or a week or longer. I, I think it's a beautiful place to live and to work and uh, to visit. <laughs>